The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. The sun is out. The allergies are killing me. And that means it is time for the morning market kickoff. Let's take a look at what we got going on pre-market right now. Uh, we have the ES Mini up about 0.21%. Uh, the Russell up about 0.57%. Let's take a look at the ES Mini right now. Um, people are looking at a gap down coming in pretty soon. Uh, of course, we'll talk a little bit today, but uh, a lot of the Fed chairs are saying that we might not even get a cut this year um, or that if inflation remains uh, sticky in a sense that we might see one more rate increase you know this goes against kind of what this whole philosophy in the market is currently which is we're going to get rate cuts so let's price you know two or three in and you know that's not some random thing the market made up i mean you you did have the fed talking about that a little bit uh, earlier in the year. Let's take a look at the gold contract uh, trading at 2,350 and making all time highs in the gold. Uh, and as I've been learning from Tim Ward and Tom O'Brien, uh, you can kind of almost see like decade highs in the runs in gold when it does this. And it was a sleeping giant for quite a while. So it's waking up and we'll see what we can get out of it. Uh, any significant pullback would obviously just be a, a point of buying. Know if these analyses are correct. I mean, you take a look. There's so much nothing going on in the gold market for so long. And it was going to silver. Silver is just really knocking it out. We're up 1.75% for the open, uh, trading just under $28 on the contract. And then copper. Yes, yes, 430. Love that. We were looking at what, 407 sometime last week? Uh, just a fantastic move in copper as well. Now, crude oil, we are inching higher with it, trading about 86.76 on the contract. Of course, that is due to OPEC cuts. Um, in my opinion, I, I don't know if this is really tensions in the Middle East uh, in any way. I, I just think I, I, the more and more that I read about it and the more that I think about it, I, I tend to think these are like essentially political vehicles, right? These kind of production cuts. And so it remains to be seen what Saudi Arabia decides to do. I know OPEC is more than just Saudi Arabia, but Saudi Arabia is so influential and uh, obviously produces so much more oil uh, than the rest of the uh, components. Let's look at the bonds. Obviously, uh, rates are still pretty high. I think we're at 4.5 in the 10-year. Uh, we're looking at the 30-year right now. This is the 10-year currently, trading at 109.07. Uh, of course, this is back down from around like 110 that we were trading at 111. Tesla up 2.3 percent. They're taking a pivot, uh, and this is a major thing that Musk had spoken about. Uh, but we're also seeing it develop in, or excuse me, manifest in companies like Ford as well, uh, which we're going to speak about. And this is really how do you compete with China uh, in in low production costs of EVs, and really the answer is you, you can't. The West cannot replicate that with our current model. Um, and you know, I don't see anything bar like a pretty <laughs> disastrous switch of events leading us to producing anything that cheap, right? So you have Ford essentially suspending new EV developments, waiting for the market to mature, and you have Tesla saying we're not going to try to pursue these cheap. EVs anymore, right? So they're seeing themselves as kind of, I suppose, focusing on more luxury lines, which is fine. And I would suppose the way that you should pivot with that. And, and really, if anyone knows how to kind of navigate the EV market, I would suppose it's a company that's been in it before really anyone else. Um, of course, you have companies like Fisker and stuff like that. But I mean, Tesla is the real one that brought it to any kind of uh, commercial sale. Still Dynamics trading at 147.27. Uh, just a constant move higher. Of course, big volume on the gap up. Not necessarily a gap, but a large bar to the upside. Um, and then, as we see consistently, just lower volume inching up. 
we take a look at kind of anything else it does, right? So let's see, you have high volume. Let's see if we can get a day where we kind of just move up. I mean, you know, you get high volume on these tick ups and then you come back down and test it. This is, you know, it's hard to see a trading pattern. I have to look a little bit closer on this. Again, the trading pattern that we had going for quite a while and it was profitable. Um, it was when I was playing is you, you had this trade from really like 100 to 110 and it kept balancing to and fro, right? And so that was pretty nice. But this is what it tends to do in general. You get, you know, high volume moving up and then no volume whatsoever, kind of a retrace to maybe like a fraction of what it was when it gapped up. And then we keep going higher in Steel Dynamics. It is a cool stock to look at. Uh, dollar trading at 104.27. A lot of the relational behavior uh, between bonds, gold, the market, the dollar, it seems to be suspended almost for a short time, right? There's like a, a disjointment in a sense, right? Usually when you have a higher dollar, you have a lower market, right? Okay, we're not seeing that. Usually when you have a high dollar, you have lower metals. We're also not seeing that, right? Now, of, of course, the global economy is not just America, right? You have a lot of purchasing pr uh, power, excuse me, um, yeah, you have a lot of purchasing of essentially like gold and other kind of metals uh, from China. Their holiday spending has uh, exceeded pre-pandemic levels, and so they're recovering a little bit from some of the economic issues they were having earlier this year. Regardless, it is seeing like these kind of relations um, are just suspended for a short time, and I'm sure they will go back to what it normally is. We have the QQQ trading at 442. Google at 154. Anyways, the point is the market isn't open yet. We'll talk a little bit about Celsius. Um, they're deciding to expand uh, into Europe. They're not going with PepsiCo, um, with another company which is actually unique. However, Celsius is, is super interesting to me. Um, when I go to the grocery store, go in anywhere, gas stations, convenience mart, whatever it is, they are so just prominent, right? You walk in and it is the first thing you see. And it's been that way for, for quite an extended period of time. You've had this issue with energy brands, energy drink brands, where they target basically like young males, right? I mean, you have Monster, you had, let's just take the originals, right? Monster, you had Red Bull. Red Bull went with the more, you know, maybe it, the upper class or kind of give me one second here. Let me put that out. Um, kind of crowd, you know, they, they obviously host the kind of like Red Bull uh, sports events and everything, which is very neat, right? So this is kind of fast moving, uh, do it yourself kind of deal. Um, Monster was definitely just for kind of like the common person. And, you know, you had Bang Energy, which was hitting uh, Gen Z pretty hard and kind of like the gym bro culture of, um, of Bang. So the question is, is how do we tap the rest of the market? And, and you know, really also how do we get into uh, having women purchase our product, right? Because it's, you know, half of the consumer. And Celsius has done such a good job of doing this. Um, every woman in that I know that drinks energy drinks is Celsius. And I don't, I'm not saying that it's just like a, it is a broad statement, but it's accurate, right? I mean, no one in that demographic is drinking Red Bull, Monsters, Bang, it doesn't exist. Bang for a little bit with the gym kind of uh, angle, but really it's, it's Celsius, they're dominant. They have different product lines now, which I think was huge for them. And uh, they're now expanding um, heavily into Europe and the rest of the world. Uh, I think the company is really interesting and it you know, remains to be seen. I, I would say doing a fu fundamental analysis on this would be kind of interesting. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome, folks. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. If anyone can transport me a coffee or something that'd be awesome let's take a look at what i'm looking at right now i'm going to move this over here so that we get a new tab fall with me on this okay we're gonna to go to tfnn.com all right wait for that to load and then we're gonna to go to services now right here it's gonna be on the front page soon here okay i want you to take a look here this is live this is new service that we're actually having okay and this is actually really interesting um, if you guys have attended Larry's webinars before, you know he does live trading. Uh, awesome to watch, um, very insightful, profitable, all these kind of things. Right now we're looking at live, tra uh, live trading Fridays with Larry Pesavento. Okay, so every second and fourth Friday of the month, um, we're going to join Larry for live trading. Okay, this is from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time. Okay, so second and fourth Friday of the month, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time. Okay. This is gonna be in the den. If you're not in the den, this is the reason to get in there. If you're in the den, I mean, it, it is so seamless. You don't have to do anything except sign up, okay? And we take care of the rest here, right? This is, about, this is $2.95 a month, okay? And for the first month, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go here on the promo code. If you already have an account, click here. If you, you know, don't fill this whole thing in because it won't work. You're gonna go to already have an account. You're gonna log in here. And then when you're ready to check out, you're gonna put Larry Live right there. You hit add code, that's gonna take you, that's gonna get 50 bucks off, okay? So you pay 245 a month for that. It is, I can't wait, okay? So we're starting one this Friday, it's gonna be fantastic. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you all guys there. If you have any questions, you know, just send me an email, jacobtfnn.com. Uh, you can call me as well, uh, super seamless, okay? One of the things I wanna to say too on it is, you know, since we're doing this through Discord, I don't get this often at all, but maybe like once or twice or three times. Um, if you, you've been in the den, for whatever reason you stop using it, I really suggest getting back in, okay? 
Um, I'll move this over here quickly. I don't know what this is gonna do for screen share, but if you're having issues or anything like that, maybe you don't like the notifications or whatever in the Discord, which I understand, I have a help center right here. You click that, I have videos, I have, this is basically my most frequently asked question is how to turn off notification settings, right? Don't let stuff like that dissuade you from being in something that is so amazing as that. I mean, look at this, right? I mean, this is, this is even market open and we're in here uh, talking since 6 a.m., okay? This is a fantastic, uh, fantastic service that we have. So anyways, that's right. Get ready for Larry uh, live. That is going to be live trading Fridays. Anyways, let us move on just a tad. Um, I want to talk about Ford quickly. One moment. I believe Saw posted this in the den too, which is funny because I wanted to speak about it. Okay. Let's take a look at Ford, cracking down a little bit. All right. They're going to cease any new development of EVs. They're still producing their lines and everything, right? Um, but essentially, their major fear is they don't know where they fit in, right? And you can even see this with Tesla trying to figure out really where they fit in. Tesla has cut any plans for a cheaper EV. They're going to leave that to companies um, over in China, which I, I think is the most logical thing to do, right? Because we can't produce on similar levels as the Chinese. But I would also say in the same vein is that currently the capacity of China isn't geared towards um, luxury and higher quality uh, goods, right? So these are like cheaper mass produced goods. And that's kind of where you see like the advantages laying um, on the global economy. So some basic facts right here is like Ford Motor Company essentially lost 4.7 billion uh, from its Model E unit. Uh, this is obviously their EV unit. Uh, 4.7 billion in 2023 was rough. It's going to get worse, and the management is expecting uh, to reach over 5 billion loss in 2024. All right, so they're updating a little bit. Okay, uh, Ford management announced plans for the Model E unit to reach profitability before taxes by late 2026, and even reaching 8% pre-tax profit margins. Uh, fortunately, essentially, demand is stalling. You know, so uh, I the, these were kind of figures that they were pushing a little bit before we had a massive shakeup of the EV market uh, globally. Um, Ford's is expanding its hybrid electric vehicle strategy. Ford plans to become more flexible and offer hybrid powertrains across its entire Ford Blue, um, which is its gasoline vehicle business. And that should be by the end of the decade, which I think is an interesting, uh, <laughs> It's an interesting approach, right? Because in a, in a sense, what you, what you fear is you dump a bunch of money into research and development, right? Into a wing that's not gonna be profitable and they don't know where it's going currently. Whereas hybrid vehicles, you can still sell uh, to traditional consumers, right? They're not purely EV. Of course, there is still a component to EV in it, uh, but, but in a way it's kind of like real time, like war gaming, right? Like you're not just focusing strictly on EV, but you have your, you know, R&D team uh, still looking at it in some capacity, and it can still generate some income. I actually think that's a very smart move by Ford. Uh, another takeaway is that while Ford uh, has works on introducing hybrid options across its traditional vehicle lineup, it will be working on uh, the next generation EVs. Now that part is, is off the table currently. Um, they're gonna wait again for more uh, development to come through. Regardless, um, I think to watch Ford, ah, man, you know, it's kind of rough to say, right? I mean, they're losing tons and tons of money. Now, if they, they stop massive investments into EV, which it seems like they're going to slow down at, le at least, and this is just to cut losses, I think the stock can go up a little bit because of it. And that's a weird voodoo thing in the market right now. But um, regardless, uh, that's kind of what we're looking at with Ford and really the EV market as a whole. Um, China is going to continue to smash this. I have no doubt uh, in my mind whatsoever about it. Speaking of that, let's take a look at this article. And Yellen actually went over to China, which is neat. Oh, it's something to keep in mind, too. There's not really a little, you know, it's not much to develop on. But the Chinese run an, uh, essentially like an EV seminar every year. I think last year was in Germany or something like that. Uh, but it will be in San Francisco this year. Uh, which is pretty cool. Obviously, massive Chinese-American community there, and China continues to show that area uh, love regarding speeches that they have there. Uh, so I would stay tuned for that to kind of see, you know, what their plan is. Uh, anyways, the headline for this is U.S. will not accept Chinese imports 
decimating new industries, which I think is interesting, right? Like, level of protectionism on it. Uh, so Secretary Janet Yellen warned China on Monday that Washington will not accept new industries being decimated by the Chinese imports as she wrapped up four days of meetings to press her case for Beijing to rein in excess industrial capacity. Yellen told the press conference that uh, Joe Biden would not allow a repeat of the China shock of the early 2000s when a flood of Chinese imports destroyed about 2 million American manufacturing jobs. She did not threaten new tariffs or other trade actions should Beijing continue its massive state support for electric vehicles, batteries, solar panels, and green energy goods. And you know, really, this is, it's this new like gentle fist kind of strategy you have to have globally, right? And the Chinese do the same thing too. We sit out there and force tariffs and do this, they'll, they'll retaliate as well. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, welcome back, folks. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. Uh, Going to move on. But my last statement on this, looking at Tesla 168, I was just looking up, yeah, let's see here. This, this, see, this is wild to think, right? Like, so Tesla's cheapest model is about 40,000. Honestly, I feel like a lot of new cars are close to that anyway. Uh, and then, <laughs> so they were essentially scrapping plans for Model 2, which is about to be $25,000 for the family. 
obviously that kind of tumbled sales. Anyways, they also had a, they had the robo taxi. Here's the thing though, they're not going, to, I, th I think they're gonna cut that, to be quite honest. Their major, their major focus, in my opinion, is gonna be these more luxury vehicles, and uh, it'll just be selling data, the companies that wanna do it. Anyways, let's move on here. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about what the Fed's saying, right? So we had an insane job report, okay? It seems like the, the economy just wants to keep its workers, right? I think we're at a really, again, pivotal kind of time in this kind of monetary theory, or really economic theory in general. And I kind of wonder if, you know, the, the, the plans of the Fed, which has traditionally been increased unemployment, is going to work anymore. And of course, a lot of this was supply side and not really demand side. So they were trying to artificially, you know, affect supply side by decreasing demand. But, um, you know, from the job reports in March, it, it seems like that's not really working. Now, you had some talk with Fed, or, <clears throat> excuse me, with Powell, saying uh, that they'll decrease rates anyways, regardless of a job report. And I think this is more like theoretical in, in a sense. But then you have Governor Bowman come out. Well, first, let's start with, with Cash Carry. Okay. So Cash Carry says there is a possibility of no rate cuts this year. Okay. So it, I'm going to quote him here. He says, in March, I had jotted down two rate cuts this year if inflation continues to fall back towards the 2% target. This is uh, from Thursday. If we continue to see inflation moving sideways, then that would make me question whether we need to do those rate cuts at all. In January and February inflation readings, he called them a little bit concerning, and he said he needs to see more progress on prices to gain confidence that they're moving towards the target 2% rate uh, before lowering borrowing costs. Because if we, if we have a run rate that's attractive, people have jobs, businesses are doing well, inflation is coming down, why do anything at all? Interesting concept. Um, however, I think a lot of this strong rally is coming from a uh, multiple price cuts actually pricing it. Okay. And then, I don't think cash carry votes on this anyway, so then you have Fed Governor Bowman. And she says additional rate, uh, rate hikes could be needed if inflation stays high. So Michelle Bowman on said Friday that it's possible interest rates may have to move higher to control inflation rather than the cuts her fellow officials have indicated uh, are likely and the market is expecting. Uh, while it's not the baseline outlook, she continues to see the risk that at a future meeting we may just, uh, see an increase, excuse me, need to increase the policy rate further should progress on inflation stall or even reverse. And I think, you know, I I'm, I'm interested to see what goes on at least uh, the next upcoming CPI report because I do think it'll be a little bit higher. I think some of that, a lot of that probably will be from volatile goods, like food and uh, gas. Uh, but regardless, um, I, I think that has a psychological effect as well. Let's take a look right now, because we're at market open four minutes past the open. You have the ES Mini up 0.09%, so sideways there, with the Russell up 0.73%, and Q's, uh, again, sideways as well. The Dow futures up 0.12%. The gold contract is 2,351 and 80 cents. Right now trading down a little bit to 60 cents, but we're up 0.26 from the open. Silver, 2782, up 1.2%, really rocking this morning. Uh, copper as well. I mean, look at that contract again, guys. $4.30. I love it. Crude oil continues to march higher. Uh, this is a light sweet crude oil futures at uh, 8705. We are at 86 something. Uh, pre-market. Take so a look at the dollar staying strong at 104.21, uh, but seems to want to stay in this 104 to 105 area. And Steel Dynamics up a little bit on the open at 148.37. Apple off a little bit. Disney off a little bit. Disney down a little bit from last week, uh, trading at 117.83. Regardless, love to see it for that stock. Take a look at Bristol Myers Squibb just a little bit. I can get everything loaded. Give me one second. Regardless, okay, let's take a look right now. Um, so Bristol Myers Squibb down a little bit. Uh, essentially, one of the big things that people are looking at is, and this is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of talk about it just theory a little bit, um, but they have a new schizophrenia drug, right? That's doing pretty well, getting passed. Um, one of the major issues with schizophrenia drugs is that they cause weight gain, okay? So Bristol, Miles, Bristol Myers uh, acquired a company uh, sometime last year for quite a lot of money, 
and um, this seems pretty hopeful. What I want to talk about, and it's not so much with that drug or bristol myers squib in general, and it's something that I learned um, not recently, but like maybe in the past like two years. But it's that usually if a drug doesn't pass, you know, so you 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 put a drug up for FDA, you know, testing um, for a certain reason, right? And if it doesn't perform that way, right, even if it has other benefits, it, it gets shelved entirely because the amount of money invested in to pass it is so high. And I think that's that's crazy, and I'd never heard about that. Anyways, let's take a look at this a little bit more. Um, so Bristol Myers Squibb um, acquired uh, Car XT. That was a $14 billion deal last year. Uh, Long-term uh, data of the drug reinforced the findings that were seen in previous short-term studies. Uh, did reduce disorders and uh, did not have the uh, common weight gain uh, with antipsychotics that you see. Let's see here, in a year follow-up, the drug helped curb symptoms, such as delusions, reduce speech by more than equal 30% um, in over 75% of patients, uh, reduced weight on average, um, you know, not really important unless you're like a scientist and understand. Regardless, um, you weren't getting weight gain in it. Uh, Bristol-Myers was actually looking pretty good over a few years, but we've, we've really just seen a slow decline uh, in it on kind of low volume as well. Uh, so it remains to be seen if something like this can kind of pull up uh, that stock price at all. Uh, AI, okay, let's talk a little bit. Uh, the Biden administration is giving TSMC, let's pull this up, uh, about $6.6 .6 billion, which is awesome. That's to develop uh, more production stateside. Um, One second. Okay, here we go. All right. So U.S. is offering uh, TSMC up to six point six billion dollars. Uh, that is going to be for producing uh, some stuff stateside. That is going to be in Austin. Excuse me, Arizona uh, factories are going to be producing chips, which is fantastic, up 1.78% right now. Uh, the funding under the U.S. Chips and Science Act will support Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing of more than $65 billion. Uh, and that's three cutting-edge fabrication plants in Phoenix, according to the non-binding agreement. The Taiwanese multinational semiconductor company is also eligible for around $5 billion in proposed loans under the CHIPS Act. This is going to be cool. We're going to talk a little bit about AI and this uh, going forward when we come back from the break. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. 
Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Jacob Shoup here. Um, we're just talking a little bit about U.S. offering about $6.6 .6 billion to TSMC for chip fabrication, for three chip fabrication plants in uh, Phoenix. Let's move on a little bit, talking with AI. This is coming from Alibaba, okay? Pull them up quickly. Give it a second to load. Anyways, they're cutting prices for cloud customers um, in U.S. and Singapore by as much as 59% mirroring deep discounts at home. Uh, the move coincides with a surge in demand for cloud computing to support a global boom in AI development, as well as complicated internal restructuring. CEO is spearheading a far-reaching overhaul to try to revitalize Alibaba's main businesses, including e-commerce. Alibaba canceled plans for public listing of the cloud business in November. I think your major issue that you're going to come across with, you know, a company that provides cloud is... Uh, they're in China, right? And so the thing is, is when you're using the cloud, you're just essentially paying someone to store your data, right? So that's all key economic data, that's payroll data, whatever it is, whatever you're storing on the cloud, that's on someone else's uh, servers, right? And it's supposed to make, you know, data and information more easily uh, transmissible. But at the end of the day, you don't, you, you need to know who is kind of holding that. Right, and I think that's probably a major issue for people outside of China, um, with with Alibaba. Right, I mean you're you're essentially sending your data to a Chinese company, and how involved is the government with that? It's a hard thing to say. Right. What I see going forward is, I think personally, Microsoft is is best positioned for this. Right. So you have something like Amazon, who is AWS, uh, very broadly used, and I would say. Definitely, too, for companies that are smaller and are more willing to accept multi-vendor use. Larger companies are many times, not many, you know, it, it's, an, it's definitely an argument in, in the industry, but the, the larger companies tend to lean towards more uh, univendor support, right? And the reason for that is, you know, you need everything working very seamlessly. Every company does, right? But for larger companies, this is super important. Um, and so you're going to go to the company that has a bunch of different suites, right? And that's going to be Microsoft, okay? So they have Office, they have Teams. I know that's decoupled from Office now, but still Microsoft Teams. You have, you have uh, Azure with it. And now you have potentially ChatGPT. Um, and so the way that I see things going forward is that you're going to have AIs, and I've said this before, that are going to be sold to companies in, and they're going to be new. And what I mean by that is they'll be untrained in the ways that they respond. They'll still respond the same way as ChatGPT is. There's not gonna be all these breaks on it. And the idea is that they're more malleable to be able to better solve uh, problems that the company has. And there'll be unique problems, right? And so the question remains, 
is where do you store that data? Because it's all sensitive. Again, one of the biggest issues we're going to face going forward in economics and really security is going to be shadow, uh, excuse me, shadow AI. So you're going to have these companies, workers there who are filling in really sensitive data, and that information is going to some external server. Very, very bad security position to have. Uh, so what I see happening is Microsoft, a lot of companies will already use Azure. A lot of them don't already with AWS. Uh, but, but they'll offer this AI for business, and they'll be like, don't worry, you'll come store all of your data um, on Azure, or at least something that we have uh, interaction with, whether that's because of business entanglements or whatnot. Um, so I think that's actually uh, really unique, and that's not fully fleshed out yet, but that's just kind of what I see um, going forward. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the, give me a second if I can get the uh, article up. It's actually a statement from the SEC. Uh, this is something that I've complained about quite a bit, and it was, uh, you have all these companies saying, what is, what is one? Uh, it's called Lemonade. It's like an insurance company. Uh, and I had one of my friends was talking to me about it. And he was saying, yeah, it's an insurance company, essentially, and they're using AI, quote unquote, in order to develop competitive plans. And in my argument, these kind of like small time learning algorithms aren't really AI the way that we actually know them, which is which is kind of generative AI, right? That's not what they're using. And I think a lot of companies have been able to kind of ride the coattails of this AI boom and say, hey, listen, we use AI for this, um, not really explaining what AI is for them. And uh, they're, they're seeing a bunch of return for it, uh, at least in their stocks. And it kind of falls flat because it's not really anything novel that they're using. So Gary Gensler, um, this is from sec.gov, came out and said, this is not okay. Uh, he goes, it's already been using finance, this is AI, where there's potential benefits to greater inclusion, efficiency, and user experience. Um, when new technologies come along, we've also seen time and time again false claims uh, to investors by those purporting to use those new technologies. Of course, investment advisor and broker dealers might want to tap into the excitement about AI by telling you that they're using this new technology to help you get a better return. Public company execs uh, think that they'll enhance their stock price when they talk about uh, AI. The SEC want to make sure that these folks are telling the truth. In essence, uh, they should say what they're doing and do what they're saying. Investment advisors or broker dealers should not mislead the public by saying they're using an AI model when they're not, nor say that they're using an AI model in a particular lay way, but do not do so. Public companies should make sure they have a reasonable basis for the claims they make, and yes, the particular risks that they face about their AI use, and investors should be told that basis. Referring to this as AI washing now, whatever, uh, whether it's by financial intermediaries, such as investment advisors and broker dealers, or by companies raising money from the public, uh, that AI washing may violate the security laws uh, yeah, I, again, think that's a major issue. Um, I would reckon probably there are companies that just aren't even using AI and, and saying it. Um, but I think that what this is going to end up doing is in the next few years, we're, we're going to see uh, legal definitions of what different AIs are, right? Like, if I just keep adding data to a model, and the model keeps revising what the next step should be or what the conclusion is, uh, that is AI in a sense... Um, but it's but it's not generative AI the way we look at it. And I would argue, too, generative AI isn't even capable of what a lot of people think it's doing. You know, this stuff that is happening in, uh, you know, with the military and everything like that, that's not like our run-of-the-mill generative AI like chat GPT. I would also argue, too, and I mean, new stuff's coming out, and chat GPT-4 is a bit better at it, but it's not, it's not there yet, you know? Um, I was trying to have it essentially add uh, just some a bunch of different um, percentages, percent gains and losses. I just had so many of them. And it ended up giving me the average, which is not right at all. And so I responded to it and I said, hey, why did you give me the average? I just needed the, the sum of this, right? Um, and he goes, no, sorry, you're, you're right. That's what I should have done. And I said, no, like, tell me, like, should you take the average or the sum? And then it went back. It's like, well, we should take the average, but clearly... That's not true. It can't do ciphers at all, um, which is like just simple transposition of letters, which, you know, you, they teach kids. Uh, so I don't know. I, not to say, obviously, there's some AI that are like dominant and can do a lot of different things. And we see that with like military. But this generative AI stuff that the common consumer is using is not fully there.
yet. And so beware when someone's trying to get you to give them money because they use AI. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors the reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades at TFNN we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news that's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm back. Uh, I'm reading this article. This is from uh, basically Truth Social, down 9% today. Um, it, Trump is suing the, the co-founders, and he's saying they're not entitled to stock shares. Yeah, this was last week, but uh, I just wanted to talk about this a little bit. Um, he's alleging that they mismanaged the social media platform early on and should therefore lose stock in the company, which recently went public. Papers filed last week in Florida State Court, Trump Media and Technology Group Corporation argued that executives Wes Moss and Andy Lidinsky made a series of costly mistakes that resulted in a long delay in the company's going public and urged a judge to strip them of the shares in the company. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this is a phenomenal opportunity, um, and they were riding the president's coat's tails is what they said. Um, crazy event. Uh, you know, this... this was up at $79, and we're trading down at thirty six eighty, down nearly 10%. These, I, I get so concerned for these new, like, I think, personally, this, this was definitely, like, uh, just a social image move, I would say. Um, but if you're talking about, like, really getting a new competitive social media platform running up, it, it's quite difficult because you, you need people that will 
bring others to it, right? I mean, if you just have like a small group, you might as well just stay on forums and everything like that. Um, I, but essentially what I'm saying is like, I see companies like Rumble and all these other guys, I think there's Mastodon was one of them. And the whole idea, even, even with, with Musk buying Tesla, or excuse me, uh, Twitter, um, y you know, in, in order to uh, increase free speech or whatever the idea was behind all that, which is, in my opinion, was probably the, the public reason why Truth Social was occurring. Um, they, they just, they don't take off. And it, it's because they don't have the volume of interaction things like Twitter and YouTube and Facebook have. Um, so it's, it's interesting. Like all the people that I know on Facebook, and I have all different age groups and everything of people that I'm acquaintances with or whatever, I don't use that app that much, but I'll go on every now and then to check stuff. And uh, the people who are still on there are complaining about Facebook and uh, they're not using truth. It's very interesting. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for joining me. I'll be with you for the rest of the week. Um, we'll have a good week. Send me some emails if you want me to look at anything. Uh, have a great rest of your day. We have Basil up next.